Hello everyone, I've decided to make this video to help anybody who's um, trying to create a 3D print from a kind of 3D scanned object. Um, so I'll give you the, um, the kind of the reason behind this is uh, my niece um, presented me with this toy horse and she just asked me if I could 3D print a saddle for it. Um, which at first I thought, well, not really. Uh, next I thought that there'd be saddles available. Uh, templates just to download and it, it turns out there isn't um, so I went through various methods uh, to eventually arrive at this one I'm about to show you um, just to see if it would help anybody else out that you know is struggling to to try and make like a 3d print from something that's a really odd shape um, or just just in general really I had to um, had to use a 3d scanner and had to turn that into a 3d print because um, I did come into some difficulties which I will go through throughout this video so you want to go to your app store, whether it's the um, Apple App Store or Google Play, type in T-R-N-I-O, Trineo, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's this first result here. So you uh, just make sure that is the right one. So it should be about 31 meg, if I remember rightly. Uh, yep, there it is. So obviously on mine, it choose to open rather than install. So just install it. So open it up. <clears throat> and you'll see uh, any previous scans or if it's a new scan just hit the plus button um, and you'll see there are two methods of um, scanning an object so you've got this AR kit which uh, is Apple's um, integration software with their camera it creates like a point cloud um, all these objects where you just take lots of photos from various different angles around the object um, and it creates a point cloud as you go as well it's very similar to both methods so the horse saddle, so in order to make the saddle, um, I did try various methods of like measuring the, the height, the width, um, but it was such a complex shape that it was just so difficult to make something from scratch. Um, so what we did was instead, um, I bought this modeling clay um, from Baker Ross, it was about £7.50 for this uh, huge, I think it's a kilo, yep, kilo block. Um, and my wife actually moulded a saddle, I mean unfortunately it's broken now, but it was a complete saddle before, um, which meant it was a perfect fit, so we just had to put it onto the horse, mould it all on, wait for it to dry, uh, and then I was able to scan it, which I'll show you the, the process now, because I'm obviously making a video now when this is broken, um, but you'll get the idea. Moving on to the actual scanning. Um, you want to choose um, an area where there's natural light, so preferably outside. Um, and you want to do it when it's sunset, so you get no shadows, because uh, that's really important. Um, I used a piece of A4 white paper to put the objects on top of, and I raised it up on a small table. Um, it's really important to clear the pathway that you're going to be moving around the object as well. Um, so make sure you've got noth um, nothing obstructing that. Uh, I happen to use the object method and it's really important to just go keep going round and round and round the object uh, from all different angles. Make sure you go over the top and underneath. When the scan is complete, um, you'll be able to move all around the object. So as you can see here, this is um, a couple of scans that I did before it broke, obviously. Um, but see, uh, I also did it from various different angles. I did one without the piece of paper and one with the piece of paper. Uh, and you will see just by looking around the object um, where the parts that it misses. Um, and how kind of careful you have to be when you are actually uh, performing the scan itself. Um, so here's one that um, is uh, stood up. I used a toothpick to um, to stand it up, uh, which didn't fully scan, uh, which is why you've got that kind of big stick in the middle there. Um, and this is just another one. So it is wise to um, to do more than one from various different angles, um, just because, like I say, the scan does 
miss various things and you'll see this one here is missing completely the uh, the underneath parts uh, so here i'm using a um, 3d uh, rendering software called um, mesh lab uh, it's uh, it's free to use so if you just go to meshlab.net you'll be able to find it uh, so here I uh, imported the scan, so from the software I just shared it with myself as an OBJ, uh, brought it in here and turned it upside down so I could get rid of this bottom face, uh, for which I used um, select vertices on a plane and then just pull the uh, the mouse so you can select the entire plane uh, and then choose to delete the set of selected vertices, which kind of removes the bottom. Um, but as you can see, it left this huge void at the top of the saddle um, and a few bits on the bottom of the back as well which um, I attempted to fix but I must admit I'm not uh, used to using this software and I'm no 3D designer either um, but what you can do is you can remesh it by going to filters, remeshing, simplification, reconstruction and then select surface reconstruction screen poisson so don't ask me what those terms mean um, I mean, there's plenty of guides if you wanted to know more, uh, but I think it attempts to fill in any gaps. Um, and this is the result here, which I must admit I was not happy about because it, I needed the space underneath the saddle because it was obviously moulded specifically for the horse. Um, so I chose not to go with the selected layer. So I just um, you can you can choose to unview the layer, which I did here to go back to the original one with just the plane removed. Um, and I thought, well. I'm kind of more used to using Tinkercad, which is a baby uh, piece of baby software, but uh, but I'll have a go at that. So I just hit, exported it here as an STL file, which um, again I'm just familiar with using with a 3D printer. So uh, that's all I did here. So moving into uh, Tinkercad, I pulled the STL file in, which was the the, the base of the saddle. Um, and Tinkercad tried to fix some of the mesh issues by adding all these extra blocks that you can see underneath here. Um, and one thing is with Tinkercad is it has like a polygon limit, so you, you can't bring in really uh, complicated meshes. Um, so this is the result of the partially broken mesh that I saved from um, Mesh Lab. Um, and then I use these individual pieces to fill in the gaps. So I use this Torah shape because it has nice rounded edges and you can play around with the shape, pull it around. Um, and I used three of them all together, um, one each for, uh, sorry, one for each side, and then one for the very back to fill in all that mess that was left at the top there. And I also built this arc shape. Um, so I took a uh, the circular piece, made a cylinder through the middle, and then just halved it so I could fill the huge gap that was underneath. Um, and then I just placed all the pieces, so various different angles that you have to play with just to make sure that it fits the shape. And then this large cutting kind of block underneath it to maintain the hole, um, which obviously going to be where the horse is. Uh, and then you group it all together to make it one piece. As you can see here, uh, I'm just going around the model just to make sure there's no holes, any gaps, because um, that will mess it up when 3D printing. Um, so just be really careful, just make sure everything's covered. And as you can see here, the cutter piece um, and how it moulds into the shape that was already there. Um, and it's really important to obviously make sure that you get the right size. So keep measuring the thing you've scanned uh, just to make sure that you do have the right size because sometimes it pulls it in a lot smaller as a, uh, when it processes the file. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, and that was it. It was ready. Uh, once it's one piece, then uh, you can just export it as a, an STL again. Um, and the next part is pulling it into Cura. So here we are in uh, Cura. 4.7 at the moment so that's the latest one i have a uh, creality ender 5 pro printer uh, and i like to move the view around so um the back right corner is where, where those colors are so it prints facing me um so i pulled in the model uh check it all around the red parts are where it potentially needs support um so i decided to print it on its back um just so that i could um print the supports a lot easier for the, the smaller parts um, I didn't like this way around that it that it showed me initially so I flipped on its head printed the the lower the, the back part on the lower of the bed as it settles there and you see the red parts are few so it needs, needs less support so quicker printing time uh, less filament um, so here we're just going through the settings uh, I choose to print it on a 0.2 layer height um, with an infill of around 20%, uh, 
which is kind of standard. I'm using PLA, so I'm extruding that at 210 um, with a bed temperature of 60, 60 degrees at a speed of 80 mil per second. Um, and we are going to generate support. Um, so I'm not going to use tree support here, just the standard uh, straight supports that build from the bed up or on parts of the model. Um, and with a build plate adhesion of just a brim. And then we're ready to slice. So here we have it, it's going to take 7 hours and 42 minutes. I'll just check all around the model here, last time. Go through each of the layers, just to see how it's going to print. This is always worth doing if you spot any things that you think I just want to change at the last minute. And uh, yeah, it looks good to me. So we'll just go through all the layers. Yes, I'm happy. Ready to save it. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any footage of it actually printing because um, I, I didn't think of it at the time. Um, but here it is. Here's the uh, final piece. Which I'll show you as best I can. Uh, the underneath part, all the extra shapes I put in. The horn. So here we go, moment of truth. Quite a nice fit. So yeah, I think I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm pretty pleased with it too. Printed the first time, no effort, and the project was quite fun. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that helps some of you out.